Hi, it's Paul Hill from ITFlee.com, and in this lesson, we're going to be installing the VirtualBox guest editions on our new server, as well as configuring a static IP address, and we're going to rename the server. So to start, we need to open up VirtualBox, and we're going to click on the ITFlee VM that we created earlier and click Show or click Start. All right, if yours still has to start, go ahead and pause the video and wait till your VM loads up. Once it loads up, hit right control and delete, or hit input, keyboard, insert, control, delete. Okay, so now we just need to type in the password that we created earlier. Do that now and press enter, and now we'll just wait for the desktop to load. The reason why we want to install the VirtualBox guest edition CD image is that it allows us to do things like copy and paste between our host computer and our VM, and it also makes this resolution dynamic so that the resolution of our VM will be adapted to whatever the size of this window is. So if I shrink down this window, the resolution of the VM will change so that it fits inside of this screen. We're gonna go ahead and click yes and allow it to be discoverable. Uh, also that VirtualBox guest edition CD image will make it so we don't have to scroll up and down since it's resizing to fit the screen. So I'm just gonna maximize this. And to start the installation, we need to go to devices and insert guest edition CD image. All right, and now we need to scroll down and open the Windows Explorer. Or we can click right here, I believe. So we'll click, uh, we got a pop-up here and it says, choose what to do with the disk. We're gonna say open folder to view files. We just wanna run VirtualBox Windows Guest Edition. So I'm just gonna double click on this application and we're gonna proceed with the installation. Now most of these settings will be fine at default. We're just gonna click next and install. Now we will get a couple pop-ups during this installation asking us if we want to install certain drivers and things. We will always want to say yes. So here's the pop-up. Would you like to install this device um, software? You want to say yes. It's from Oracle. Uh, make sure that this checkbox always trust Oracle software is checked and then click install. Okay, so now let's say I want to manually reboot later and then click finish. All right, so we're gonna close out of this window. And the next thing we're gonna do is configure a static IP on our server. So to configure a static IP address, select the local server. And we're gonna click down here where it says IP version four address assigned by DHCP. And it says IP version six is enabled. So we're gonna right click on our ethernet adapter and click properties. And we'll uncheck IP version six because we're not going to be using that. And under IP version four, we're going to select that option and then choose properties. Now we're going to say use the following IP address. Okay. And under the IP address, I usually use dot 10 as the last octet, but you need to make sure that you set it to the same network as what your NAT network is using. So I'm using the dot zero. So I'm going to say dot 10. And then for the subnet mask, we'll leave that as default. And the default gateway will be 192.168.0.1. And that's just the IP address of the network itself. All right, and now we're gonna do the preferred DNS server as 127.0.0.1. Now this may cause issues right now because our server is not actually a domain controller. So the next thing we can do is type in 8.8.8.8. And that is simply Google's DNS servers. And this will allow you to reach out to the internet and, make, and resolve host names like google.com and so forth. So we're gonna go ahead and click okay. And we'll click close. And we will close out of this window. Now the last thing that we need to do is rename the computer. So over here at computer name under local server on server manager, we're just gonna select this little random generated name here. We'll click change. And the, for the computer name, I'm gonna call it ITFDC01. For IT flea as the first three letters, and then DC is domain controller, and then 01 because it's the first domain controller. And I'll just click OK. All right, so now it's saying we must restart our computer. That's fine because we also need to restart for the VirtualBox Guest Edition. So we're going to click Close, and then we're going to say Restart Now. So we're just going to let the computer restart, and then we'll log back in once it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video as this, re this first reboot can take a while. So if you need to pause the video and wait for your computer to come back to the login screen and then go ahead and resume the lesson. 
Okay, so now I'm back to the login screen. So before the screen will resize, we need to log in. So I'm gonna hit right control and delete. And I'm gonna type in my administrator password. So we can see that this little scroll bar is still here and we just need to give it a little bit longer. Sometimes you also have to resize the screen before it'll figure out that it needs to have an adjustment. So there it went ahead and automatically adjusted. So now we can see that the resolution is fitting within the window. Now also, if I hit right control and F, I will be brought into full screen mode. So you can no longer see the file or the uh, virtual box options at the top. Instead, they're down here at the bottom. So if I hover over this little bar, I can see the same set of options down here. So it's a little bit easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. And it's uh, a little bit better of a setup, especially for, you know, so you don't accidentally, if you're trying to close server manager, and I'm gonna pop out a full screen real quick. It can be confusing on which X to hit. Sometimes you'll exit the VM instead of exiting a program like server manager or something like that. All right, so I'm gonna pop back into full screen by hitting right control and F. And now let's just make sure we're connected to the internet. So the way we're gonna do that is by opening command prompt. You could also just open the Internet Explorer and browse to something, but why not do it the IT way? We're gonna hit the start button and type in CMD and command prompt is gonna come up. This is a program that you're gonna to need to use a lot. So it might be worth it to just go ahead and right click and pin it to your taskbar, okay? So now we have it down here. So if we need to open command prompt, it's really easy. We just click it down here. And we're just gonna say ping google.com and we'll see if we get a reply. And we can see we do have a reply from google.com. So this VM is now connected on the internet and it has a static IP address. If we type in IP config, I can see that my IP address is 192.168.0.10. And that's what I set up as my NAT network, these first three octets, 192.168.0. So I am good to go with this VM. And that's all we need to do in this lesson. So great job getting through this. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.